It's now time to complete Lesson 7, Chapter 3, Manipulating Pictures. This lesson has a few tricks to it, so please follow along carefully. Click Learn, and click Continue. With the Experiencing Antarctica document open, ensure the cursor is at the beginning of the heading, Experiencing Antarctica. So let's make sure our cursor is blinking at the beginning of the heading. Click the Insert tab, and in the Illustrations group, click Online Pictures. Here's the Insert tab, Online Pictures. Type Antarctica. Please take careful uh, measures to spell this correctly. There's that extra C in there. Antarctica. Type that in the search Bing field and press enter. Now it says to locate and click an image of a map of Antarctica, but we found that um, you actually want to first change the, the search criteria right here. It says Creative Commons only. We're going to change that to all. There we go. And now we're going to click on I recommend clicking on this, an image that looks kind of like this first one, this map of Antarctica with a, a blue circle around it. Uh, so click the image and click insert. Making that small change allows us to have just an image. If you hadn't um, chosen to search for all items, sometimes um, when you insert a picture, it also gives you a little text box that explains the source of the picture. If you have one of those little text boxes accompanying your image, you need to delete the text box or go back and find an image that, um, and follow the directions so you don't get that. It's important in this lesson that it's only an image. Okay? And this is another important part. Make sure after your image has been inserted, you click off to the right of it so that the following image will be inserted after this one. Because this image that we just put on the map needs to be image one. So you'll notice if I put my cursor on the map, in this picture, to the right, there's a little box that says image one. We want this to be named image one. Now we're going to repeat steps two to five to search for and insert an image of a penguin. So we'll go back up to two, click on the insert tab, click on online pictures, type in penguin, press enter. And again, I recommend you change the search criteria here from Creative Commons only to all. And I'm going to select this penguin, I think. He looks pretty cute. I'm going to click Insert. Here we go. And again, if you'll notice, there's no extra text box that was pasted with this picture. Okay, you have to make sure that this is an image. Now, if I put my cursor on the screen, you'll notice it's labeled with image 2. That's what you want. And another important thing is once your penguin image is loaded, you want to click off to the right of the picture. Now we're going to go back again to the Insert tab, but this time just choose Pictures and navigate to the Resource Files folder. So I'm going to go to Documents, Jasper Active, Resource Files, and find the iceberg. And it tells us to double click to insert this image. So now we have three images two online images and one image inserted from a file. Mark as answered and click next. Click on the penguin picture and drag it down to the beginning of the wildlife tour bullet point. So let's just scroll down before we uh, drag it and find wildlife tour. Here's this bullet point down here. So we're going to click on our penguin picture and drag it down. And you'll notice our cursor turns into a, a vertical line so we can see where we're placing it. And we want it just in front of the W. Now it looks a little glitchy that that vertical line disappears, but if you put your cursor in the right spot and release it, it'll go right in front. Mark as answered and click next. Point at one of the corner handles of the penguin picture. So these little white circles are called handles. and Jasper Active is asking us to choose a corner. When you um, click on a corner and you hold the shift key, it keeps the same ratio. So hold down the shift while you click and drag on a corner handle. And click and drag until it's approximately two inches high. 
So I'm kind of looking at the ruler on the left side of my screen. And when I look across at that ruler, it looks like it's from the three to the five and a half. So that's about two and a half inches. So let's make it a little smaller. There we go. It looks like it's from the three to the five. So that's approximately two inches in height. With the penguin picture still selected, click the layout options button. And the layout options button is this little one that looks like a rainbow. We sometimes call it text wrapping rainbow, but its official name is layout options. And then choose the option titled square. And that's this one right here. Remember, if you put your cursor over each of the items, it will tell you the name of it. And we want square. Be awesome. And now we're going to drag the pink penguin picture to the right side of the bullet point. There we go. That square option allows the text to go around it really nicely. Mark as answered and click next. Return to the top of the document and select the map image. Point at one of the corner handles, press the shift key, and then drag inwards until the picture is approximately one and a half inches in height. So this one's going to be a little smaller than the last. All right, so I'm looking at the side ruler here, and it's between a half of an inch and two and a half. So that's about two inches. So let's make it a little smaller. Also, in the upper right-hand corner on the Format tab, it tells me the height, so I can tell if I'm getting close. Right now it says I'm at one, point one and 34 hundredths of an inch, so I could spare to make it a tiny bit bigger. There we go. That's close enough. With the map image still selected, we're going to change the text wrap option to square. So click on the layout options box and change it to square, just like with the penguin. And we're going to drag the picture to the right side of the opening paragraph. The opening paragraph is experiencing Antarctica, so we're going to drag it to the right side. Next, click on the iceberg image and drag it to the first blank line at the end of the document. So I'm going to click and drag it to the first blank line. So I'm looking for that vertical cursor. There we go. Now it's at the end. Resize this image to approximately two inches. Right now it's two and a quarter inches, so let's just make it a little bit smaller. And I'm holding down the shift key while I'm doing that. And then it asks us to center the image. So on the Home tab, we're going to click the Center Align button. There we go. Mark as answered and click Next. With the iceberg picture still selected, we're going to work on some of the styles. So we're going to go to the Format tab under Picture Tools and then click the More button. Remember, that's the little drop-down arrow to display the different types of picture styles. Point at different picture styles to preview the effect on the iceberg picture. And then choose the rounded, reflected rounded rectangle. Okay, this one up here. Remember, if you pause and put your mouse on it, it will tell you the, the title of that style. You want reflected, rounded rectangle. Mark as answered and click Next. Ensure the iceberg picture is selected and then under Picture Tools on the Format tab, click Crop. I'm just going to click on the Crop button. I'm not going to click on the drop down arrow. Click on Crop. Click the middle handle on the bottom of the picture. So this time the handles are these little black lines. And we want to find the middle handle on the bottom of the picture and drag it upward approximately half of an inch to reduce the amount of C in the image. So if I look at my ruler on the left here, it's, the bottom is at approximately at the 8, so I'm going to bring it up to 7.5. There we go. And it says to repeat for the right side of the image. So here's the right side of the image. We're going to pick the middle handle. Right now, it looks like it's at four and three quarters, so let's drag it a half an inch to about four and one quarter. So the picture has been reduced, similar to using scissors to trim a photograph. However, Word also provides you with the option to reposition the picture within the cropped area.
Oh, and I just noticed that I missed a step. Um, it looks like I missed this part here. I need to click the middle handle on the left side. I did the bottom and the right, but I apologize. I missed the one on the, on the left side. So I'm going to pull that one in about a half of an inch. There we go. Okay, got to make sure I don't miss anything with Jasper Active. All right, so we're going to click anywhere within the cropped area, and we're going to click and drag the image down. So when I drag it down, you'll notice there's this white area at the top. And that if, when you release the click, it will set the picture in this location. And then click anywhere outside of the picture to turn off the crop. You'll notice that the top of the picture is blank. So this is an example of how you can manipulate the picture, but you should also be aware of what the final effect may be once you release the mouse. So click the picture to select it once more, and then on the Format tab, return to the Crop feature. And let's move the cropped background so that the image fills up the cropped area. So it looks a little better. There we go. And this time, we're going to click the Crop button to turn it off. There we go. Mark as answered. And click Next. Select the map picture, the first image. And on the Format tab, in the Adjust group, you're going to click on Corrections. So the Adjust group is on the left. Here is Corrections. Point at some of the different options so you can see how Word can help adjust the brightness or clarity of the picture. Then click on the option Brightness plus 20%, Contrast minus 40%. So I'm going to move my mouse around until I find Brightness plus 20%, Contrast negative 40%. And here it is. Click on it to apply it to the picture. You'll notice it changes it a bit. Mark as answered and click Next. Ensure that the first image, the map image, is still selected. And now on the Format tab in the Adjust group, we're going to click on Color. Point at some of the different options to see the effect on the picture. And then find the one titled Washout. Now, it's a little tricky because Washout, for me, shows a blank image. But if I hold my mouse there, that is the Washout setting. So I'm going to click on it even though it makes it look like you can barely see the image. Mark as answered and click next. With the map picture still selected, we're going to go to artistic effects, point at the various styles, and again this part is tricky because you can't really tell the look of the styles, but you want to find the one called marker. There we go. For me it's the second one. So I'm going to click on it. Mark as answered, and click Next. Now we're going to right click on the first image and choose the option Format Picture. It's at the bottom of this drop down table. Find Format Picture. Click the Layout and Properties, which is this little icon here with the four way arrow. Click Layout and Properties, and then click Alt Text. And we're going to type in the title. Instead of image one, we're going to backspace that out. And we're going to type map of Antarctica. Please spell it correctly. And as the description, we're going to type lowercase map of Antarctica capitalized in a neutral color. Map of Antarctica in a neutral color color. Remember, you can press pause at any time to catch up on your own screen. Next, we're going to click on the penguin image, and the format picture pane is still available. We're going to change the title of this one to penguins, and we're going to add the description, picture of penguins in Antarctica. And then we're going to click on the iceberg picture and change the title to iceberg. And then add the description, picture of iceberg with reflection effect. Let's make sure I got my capitals up. No capitals in that one. And now we're going to close the format picture pane by clicking on this little X. Mark as answered and click show results. Great. You have now completed lesson seven. Chapter 3.